Welcome to this course on transition metal organometallics in catalysis and biology. We have been discussing a very interesting reaction which is uh, repeat chemistry with regard to this uh, particular topic. Now repeat chemistry stands very relevant in today's context and we are going to be looking at the development of repeat chemistry in the overall scheme of the developments that happened in transition metal organometallic chemistry. In this context, in today's lecture, we are going to take a look at uh, the uh, chronological sequence in which the repeat chemistry evolved under conditions and requirement uh, that was the need for the day. Now, what we had seen in the early earlier class is the fact that this repeat chemistry allows access to a large number of functionalized uh, chemical feedstocks or compounds all originating from acetylene chemistry. And it was uh, uh, as if the acetylene serves as a feedstock for various different functionalized chem uh, chemistry. And today we are going to see this development in uh, the light of the overall development of uh, transition metal organometallics in the scheme of things and we, we are going to see how uh, the need of the day resulted in the development of uh, repeat chemistry. Uh, much of the research uh, that uh, goes on uh, in the present day as well as it was relevant uh, in earlier times depends on the, uh, the need of the day and is guided by the economics and the need uh, of the time. And hence in current context, uh, for example, the much of the research is about developing renewable uh, source of energy. And this involved uh, looking into options uh, uh, like solar, wind, water, biomass, so on and so forth. The reason uh, for more uh, uh, need for the development of renewable so source of energy arises from the fact that uh, these are uh, uh, clean, clean energy. That means no carbon footprint or no uh, carbon dioxide and so on and so forth. So these are the reason uh, which uh, allows us uh, to uh, focus more on uh, renewable energy. The other reason uh, uh, to have this emphasis on renewable energy arises from the fact that depletion of uh, uh, the carbon uh, footprint from the face of the earth in terms of the so-called non-renewable energy like petrochemical and petroleum. of fossil fuel. So the way uh, the things the focus had been uh, on renewable energy in the current century uh, things were however different uh, if we go back just uh, uh, about uh, 100 years or so. Uh, for example around 1800 to around nine, 1900 uh, till around 1950s uh, the focus uh, of uh, the energy source had been primarily on non-renewable uh, uh, energy. And uh, these involve fossil fuels uh, which uh, would include uh, sources like coal, natural gas, crude oil, now chronologically uh, if uh, one were to look at that uh, these uh, emphasis of energy from these sources had been uh, in the order uh, shown here that uh, petroleum uh, as well as the natural gas uh, uh, screwed oil sources were probed uh, mainly in 1950s whereas uh, the one 
those are coal uh, or coal driven uh, energy sources were more in vogue uh, uh, even before that that is in 1800s or 1900s. Now if to see the connection with respect to acetylene uh, is that from uh, the coal is a major source for production of acetylene and Whereas, uh, uh, from natural uh, uh, gas or from petrochemical industry, what people get is uh, ethylene or propylene. Now, uh, the way uh, in current times, uh, the, uh, the focus had been on uh, generating energy from renewable sources. Uh, about 100 years or so back the focus had been on gathering energy from non-renewable sources uh, which were for example uh, from that of coal or from that of acetylene or to be more uh, accurate that in early 1900 or so, or so the focus had been on uh, uh, getting it from acetylene which is a product from, from the coal uh, whereas uh, uh, maybe about uh, 3 or 4 decades later in 1950s the focus shifted from on uh, to acetylene to more uh, uh, economically feasible uh, uh, source like ethylene and propene. Now uh, the whole uh, gamut of rapid chemistry starts from here uh, uh, that uh, uh, we talk about it is about utilizing acetylene. Now rapid uh, chemistry as we had seen in our uh, previous discussion that acetylene could be converted to large number of functionalized products uh, and that had solely been because of the efforts of Walter Rappi who found out how to uh, deal uh, with acetylene. And to uh, uh, elaborate uh, further on that for example one can convert uh, 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 acetylene uh, to acetaldehyde. Uh, which is a useful intermediate, aldehyde uh, are useful intermediate for other functionalized chemicals. Functionalized uh, feedstock and uh, the conversion uh, of ethylene to acetylene uh, can be achieved by treatment uh, with water in presence of uh, sulfuric acid and mercuric sulfate. And uh, these had been one of the uh, major uh, exploits of acetylene uh, so that uh, one can see the need for developing acetylene as a, a feedstock for, for, for carrying out chemical uh, reaction. However, uh, uh, and that had been the reason uh, that has led to the development of rapid uh, chemistry. However, with time uh, the focus uh, shifted uh, from uh, acetylene to ethylene which was more easier and more cheaply uh, uh, obtained uh, from natural grass and crude oil and then uh, that had led to sort of exploring the possibility of uh, using ethylene. Uh, to uh, for making acetaldehyde uh, so that uh, again the uh, useful intermediate for accessing other functionalized feedstock uh, could be gained. And for this also resulted in a, a very important process which is called Wacker oxidation. So Wacker oxidation involves reaction of uh, ethylene in presence of palladium dichloride catalyst and copper uh, chloride catalyst which results in formation of the acetylides and this process, this process from obtaining uh, 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 acetaldehyde from ethylene uh, become more uh, prevalent in 1950s and overtook the production from that uh, from acetylene which were more prevalent in 1920s. So what we see is that the shift uh, of sort of technology for obtaining functionalized uh, feedstock uh, moving on from acetylene uh, to o o ethylene. Now these were the stories which were more in vogue about uh, 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 50 uh, or uh, 60 years back whereas now we move on to more unconventional uh, but more permanent solutions uh, uh, that is exploring energy 
from uh, renewable sources like solar, uh, wind, uh, uh, water, biomass, so on and so forth. And the primary reason is that at some point or other the whole of these uh, uh, non-renewable sources uh, would uh, uh, get depleted from uh, the face of the earth and then uh, our energy requirement has to be made from uh, the uh, sources available from the renewable energy. Now, uh, even um, under the current scenario, there is a larger argument uh, still prevalent in favor of developing this RAPI chemistry, which uh, 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 sort of makes a comparative estimates of how long this uh, uh, fossil fuel like coal or natural, uh, 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 natural gas or crude oil would last on earth. And based on the estimate, it is still uh, uh, suggested that probably the natural reserve of coal will outlive that of uh, petroleum uh, products and hence uh, uh, we still uh, would require uh, to uh, uh, focus on getting energy, some amount of energy using the RAPI chemistry. And this brings us to the relevance of RAPI chemistry in today's context. Even though both coal and natural gas crude petroleum at some point or other uh, would get exhausted, but coal uh, reserve would outlast or outlive the natural gas and the crude oil reserve and hence uh, uh, the uh, energy potential uh, arising from coal should also uh, uh, be exploited even under today's context when the focus is shifting towards more renewable energy. Now, Another point to mention uh, uh, over here is that uh, mm, in this world uh, where uh, it is everything is still yet to be standardized or people does not have a standardized opinion on uh, several issues, there are countries uh, pursuing each of these technologies depending on their uh, reserves. For example, China, uh, uh, China has a uh, large coal reserve uh, and uh, China still explores the potential of uh, acetylene as a uh, uh, feedstock. Now, uh, with these uh, uh, being the uh, scenario, uh, there is a lot of uh, thrust in looking into the uh, acetylene chemistry and uh, as far as the chemical nature or as the chemical intuition is concerned, acetylene has a higher reactivity, more reactive uh, than uh, ethylene. And hence uh, would require less step in reacting or in reactions to reach uh, the intermediates uh, than what would one would require from that uh, of acetylene. Uh, another uh, last but not the least but important uh, uh, argument however in favor of non-renewable energy is that unlike uh, renewable energy for example uh, uh, like that of the solar energy. A, there is uh, depending on the strength of the wind, there is a huge fluctuation in the power that is generated uh, uh, arising out of this uh, wind. Whereas in contrast to that, uh, energy from non-renewable uh, sources like coal uh, provides a steady a, a, a supply of uh, energy in terms of the electrical power that is generated. And hence uh, there is still uh, demand as well as argument in favor of uh, exploring the non-renewable uh, energy sources as an option for making our energy needs. Now, uh, with this background, I think now uh, you would have an understanding uh, of the reason as to why RAPI chemistry which was developed so early on in uh, 1900s uh, uh, is still relevant in today's context and that uh, uh, those reactions uh, has led uh, to so many different products uh, uh, because uh, of its various chemical exploits and that had been carried out uh, by very dedicated uh, scientists 
uh, uh, for example, in the form of Ray P, who has developed this chemistry and the name uh, suggests uh, uh, so. Now, uh, with that, uh, uh, I, I think I have pro uh, provided you uh, a, a picture of how relevant is acetylene and conversion of acetylene to other feedstock and the challenges involved uh, in this, uh, which was uh, the need of the day in early 1900, when the energy options were uh, from non-renewable sources were explored. And even now, about 100 uh, or more uh, years later, uh, uh, the rapey chemistry is still of relevance because of reasons uh, just mentioned now. Now, now with this, uh, we come back uh, to the central of rapey reaction, which is acetylene. And then uh, we are going to uh, sort of uh, look into uh, 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 the utility of acet acetylene apart from uh, what I have been just uh, talking about uh, uh, on uh, rapey kind of conversion uh, uh, in our daily uh, need. Now, acetylene, uh, uh, as I mentioned, apart from the rapey chemistry, has uh, been uh, long used uh, for uh, welding uh, uh, purposes. And uh, the first use of acetylene in uh, welding is noted as early as 1906. Uh, 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 and uh, well, the reason being the applications of acetylene in welding is because this is the strongest, safest and simplest, safest and simplest to use as a fuel gas. Uh, now, uh, uh, why, why is it so useful? Because it gives a temperature of a, around 3000 around degree centigrade uh, when mixed with oxygen. in 1 is to 1.1 1 .1 ratio. So, uh, oh, this uh, 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 by and large uh, is a very important uh, aspect that you can reach a temperature of about 3000 degree centigrade. Now, if you compare this temperature, uh, this is uh, almost about uh, half the temperature of that in sun, uh, maybe 6000 or 7000 degree centigrade. So, if this is very high a temperature in which most of the metals would, mel uh, would melt. So, application wise, uh, this temperature is by far uh, the highest uh, or the hottest of all fuel gases. Hottest of all fuel gases and hence uh, it can easily melt all of them. Uh, and hence, uh, uh, it, it is not a surprise that acetylene is, uh, 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 can, uh, is found an extensive application in welding purpose. Now, uh, it has a, a specific gravity of about uh, 0 0.9 uh, relative to 1 uh, for uh, uh, for air. So, that means acetylene is lighter uh, and hence uh, would move up uh, if unused. So, it is not going to sort of uh, uh, you know uh, sink uh, or stay low uh, uh, if there is any unused uh, uh, acetylene uh, is there. So, in that way it is kind of very safe uh, to use uh, and also uh, the oxygen ratio that it requires is uh, very less which is about 1 is to 1 many other uh, fuel gases uh, for example, ethylene or propylene would require more amount of oxygen to burn than what acetylene uh, 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 would. And uh, because of this reason, because of its light nature, uh, because of its uh, low uh, 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 oxygen consumption ratio and because of the very high temperature 
uh, that uh, 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 it can attain uh, when burning with oxygen acetylene uh, is the best uh, safest strongest and simplest fuel gas to use and has found applications in uh, various uh, welding type applications. So, apart uh, from uh, conversion of acetylene uh, to feedstock, uh, uh, acetylene has also uh, a tremendous application uh, in uh, welding industry. Uh, lastly, uh, it has also a smell uh, of that of garlic. So, if there is any leak or anything that can also uh, be uh, easily detected, garlic like odor. And uh, all of these provided uh, overview of as to why acetylene was uh, important uh, 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 in co context of application as early as uh, beginning of 1900 and why so much uh, research activities were centered around acetylene uh, which has led uh, to the development of rapi chemistry uh, which we are uh, talking uh, about. With these, uh, 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 you know, we are going to be a, a looking into some more uh, uh, reactions, uh, some of the uh, reactions uh, uh, relevant to uh, rapid uh, chemistry uh, 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 as we go on. Uh, for example, uh, the reaction of acetylene uh, with alcohols uh, results in formation of methyl vinyl ether. So, this is a reaction uh, uh, when uh, uh, vinyl uh, 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 functional group is formed and is a part of the reaction called uh, vinylation. Similarly, another example of vinylation involves reaction with cyanides. This involves a, a catalyst which gives acrylonitrile. Now, these kind of intermediates are very uh, important uh, as, uh, intermediates or monomers for various polymerization reactions including polymerization to produce uh, uh, functionalized polyethylenes where they have this uh, functional moiety cyanide attached uh, to the polyolefins. So, these uh, intermediates uh, have a lot of uh, 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 application as monomer uh, uh, for uh, various polymerization reaction. So, with this uh, uh, we come to uh, the end of uh, today's lecture uh, on uh, rapid reaction uh, in which we have looked into uh, uh, the perspective of the development of rapid reaction in the context of the energy need uh, uh, as a function of time. And what we had seen that with the passage of time from 1800 to 1900 uh, to the present scenario, uh, the uh, demand for energy uh, have been made from uh, non-renewable uh, non uh, sources uh, to that of the renewable or more technologically cleaner uh, uh, sources of energy. And this has led uh, to a shift uh, in the uh, energy sources uh, on moving from coal, uh, fossil fuel particularly from coal to uh, natural gas and crude oil. Uh, uh, in 1950s, uh, which was uh, that time in vogue because of the olefin polymerization discovery and because of the uh, petrochemical uh, research, uh, developments at that uh, point of time uh, to the current uh, scenario of 
uh, clean technology involving solar, wind, biomass, water, so on and so forth. Uh, the acetylene had been uh, uh, produced largely uh, uh, from coal and hence uh, the conversion of acetylene to other uh, feedstock has been uh, explored and successfully demonstrated uh, by Repi through his wonderful uh, set of uh, uh, reaction uh, as well as the development of, uh, of being able to handle acetylene in higher pressure. Uh, uh, but unfortunately in 1950s with uh, economics uh, uh, taking over, uh, the uh, ethylene and propylene obtained from uh, crude oil and natural oil were much cheaper and hence the development of ethylene chemistry uh, particularly from ethylene uh, uh, to that of uh, acetaldehyde using Wacker oxidation uh, took over uh, 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 as opposed to the conversion of acetylene to uh, acetaldehyde using uh, mercury and, uh, and uh, sulfuric acid in water. Uh, uh, which was sort of taken over by Walker oxidation where one could convert ethylene uh, to acetaldehyde and which could then finally be a, a used for synthesizing or accessing other uh, functionalized chemical feedstocks uh, uh, that uh, eventually gain ground. However, given the fact that uh, the coal reserve uh, on fossil fuel is going to outlast uh, the oil reserve or the natural oil and crude oil. So still even after 100 years or so, there are important uh, arguments uh, in favor of uh, developing uh, the acetylene chemistry as has been initiated uh, by VP. In this context, we have also looked at two vinylation reactions, particularly uh, the reactions of alcohol uh, with acetylene in potassium hydroxide and that of uh, hydrogen cyanide uh, with uh, uh, acetylene in presence of a catalyst give acrylonitrile. Uh, with this uh, uh, we uh, come to an end of today's class and we are going to look into some more reactions uh, uh, on RAP in the subsequent uh, lecture uh, that we are going to be taken up uh, in the next class. So till then goodbye and thank you.